In an age of fragmentation, the Catalan referendum stands apart. Unlike the Kurds, who voted overwhelmingly this past week to separate from Iraq, Catalans are not driven by an external threat or compulsion, by a war or by an economic collapse. They live well, in the prosperous heart of Europe. Their grievances are old and bone deep, reawakened by political movements, both in Catalonia and in Madrid, magnified by partisan media on both sides, and accelerated by the Spanish government's blunt, reflexive clampdown. Continue reading the main story. That it has progressed to this dangerous point is testament to the power of a nationalist narrative. It has unfolded so naturally, older people worried that the young did not fully understand the risk that they were taking. You see how it is going to end, said Mr. Joanico's mother, Serafina Sabate, who is 89. She said it sharply, under the fascist government of Francisco Franco, her father was imprisoned for six years for producing fabric for the Republican army. She asked her grandson, who was elated about the vote, what he would do if the government sent tanks. Look, we have lived through a war, Ms. Sabate said her voice shaking. If people go to the street, if someone does something against the state, they will jump on him. Anyone who has lived through the war wants these days to pass by. The city of Terrassa, an old textile manufacturing center just outside Barcelona, seemed preternaturally calm last week, the sidewalk cafes full and a yearly theater festival underway. Under the surface, however, there was the sense of an approaching collision, a collision that was days away and then hours. The mayor had mostly disappeared from public view, explaining in a Facebook post that he had come under a torrent of abuse when he had tried to remain neutral on the vote. Elementary school principals had received letters warning them they might face sedition charges if they opened their doors for voting. Teenage activists, joyful, full of expectation, talked about blocking security forces with their bodies. We have been waiting for this moment for 300 years, said Guillem Carbonell Vidal. 18, who is studying to be a theater technician. He was excited, and also sleep-deprived, having spent the last week running from one political meeting to another, debating such matters as whether to print a new currency and nationalize the banks. I am 18, and I will be able to live the way I want, he said. We will be able to build a new future. We have to build a society that is anti-patriarchal, where women don't have to suffer violence, which anyway is created by men and where the working class has power. The last few weeks, he said, have been a dream. Opinion polls suggest that about half of Catalonia's 7.5 million people support breaking away from Spain, but the separatists' influence ballooned in 2015, when independence parties won a majority in the region's parliament. There was already resentment that the Spanish government was siphoning off too much of the region's wealth. Madrid which allowed a non-binding referendum on independence in 2014, has taken a hard line this time, arguing that a unilateral act of separation flies in the face of the rule of law, and sets a dangerous precedent for other European countries struggling with similar movements. Ask independence is why the need to break away from Spain is so urgent, and the answer goes back to 1714, when Philip V of Spain captured Barcelona during the War of Spanish Succession bringing an end to the Catalan Principality. This was a period of consolidation across Europe, as strong monarchies absorbed smaller, weaker neighbors. In Catalonia, this is not obscure history, it is common, these days, to hear the archaic insult Botafler, which means a supporter of Philip V and his ally, the French House of Bourbon. Many Catalans have grown to adulthood believing that they were, simply, not Spanish. Under Franco's dictatorship, which ended in 1975, the government tried to stamp out all Catalan institutions and the language, and thousands of people were executed in purges. Virtually no Catalan family emerged from that period unscarred. But Terrassa, as a manufacturing city, also has a large population that moved to Catalonia from other parts of Spain. In those neighborhoods, it can be difficult to find anyone who supports independence. Gabriel Thafra who heads an association of migrants from Extremadura, a region in western Spain, said the mounting demand for independence had made it politically risky to question, even for elected officials. They have created a monster of illusion and excitement, said Mr. Thafra, 
a retired janitor who has lived in Catalonia since 1974. They have promised them the land of Narnia. They have promised them a Catalonia full of flowers, where happy people go to church on Sunday. That is a lie. The other people in Mr. Pfaffer's neighborhood bar, a place with one-armed bandit slot machines and a heavily tattooed bartender, thought that breaking away from Spain would lead to economic collapse. Eva Alvarez, whose family owns the bar, said she had needed to reassure her 12-year-old son that, if Catalonia became independent, they would not have to leave. Nationalism is a kind of racism, Mr. Fafra said, wondering aloud if ethnic violence would follow. As the weekend approached, there was no way to know how many in Catalonia would defy the orders from Madrid, but time for speculating was running out. The responsibility to choose fell heavily on ordinary people, like Marta Suana Rovira, 48, the headmistress of an elementary school on Carre de Sant Marion in Terrassa. Ms. Rovira wears braces, and she chooses her words carefully. On Tuesday, two plainclothes officers from the Catalan police force, the Mosses, came to visit her in her office, demanding that she sign an affidavit saying that no one had asked to borrow the keys to the school before the weekend. A few days earlier, she had received a letter from the central government in Madrid, enumerating the criminal charges that she would face if she allowed her building to be used for voting, among them was sedition, which under Spanish law carries a sentence of up to 15 years in prison. Ms. Rovira gave the officers a friendly welcome. Her mother grew up under Franco's dictatorship, when it was forbidden to study Catalan in school and recalls watching her teachers burn Catalan workbooks to prevent the inspectors from Madrid from spotting them. Ms. Rovira accepted the affidavit and said goodbye to the officers, who, after all, were doing the job they were asked to by Madrid.